I was drafted just after my 19th birthday into the United States Army during World War II, and I was put into infantry casualty replacement units. And my basic training, and actually my first long travel, was to Alabama, learning all about how to kill the guy opposite me with a bayonet at the end of a rifle. But I survived, he survived. Most of my fellow trainees were sent off to Italy. I was sent to a camp in Florida where I joined a uh, unit that was doing charts of infantry weapons. I learned all about layout, lettering, and uh, the use of mechanical drafting uh, tools. A basic training that I made a great deal of use later. Then I was sent to uh, Italy. After more or less a year in Florida, Camp Landing was located in North Florida, and I made several trips to surrounding towns and even all the way down to Miami were my first travels. Then I was put back into basic infantry training all over again, this time in terms of jungle warfare. Camp Landing was in the middle of a swamp. There were snakes everywhere. However, we survived that, but we were sent to Italy as combat replacements. And in Italy, I had my first real chance to observe all the uh, wonderful landscapes around the Naples area and then gradually up to Rome. Got to know the city of Rome. Believe it or not, took basic infantry training all over again outside of Rome in the area of the uh, Via Antica, Appium Way, where all those monumental Roman tombs in ruins, of course, were. And I became very interested in the visual experience. I spent a great deal of time in Rome, which we could on evenings and weekends, and got to see as much as I could of the uh, early Renaissance paintings and the uh, Renaissance, and also the ancient carvings, statues, which are in the Vatican Museum, which were mostly from the uh, Hadrian's Villa outside of Rome. Later, Again, courtesy of the United States, I had a Fulbright Fellowship back to Rome. This was after about 20 years later. At the end of the uh, 50s, I spent a year on Fulbright, a school year, and got to know Rome quite intimately. When I had the Fulbright, uh, it was the uh, school year of 1958 to 59. I did a lot of drawings of Roman ruins. I did a number of drawings like this in the Roman Forum during the uh, fall and winter months. Uh, this is at the back of the Palatine Hill and you can see the remains of apartments. I found out later that the uh, Roman ruins resulted primarily from earthquakes and from uh, the materials being taken for later building projects. This is a wash drawing on paper. The drawings are roughly 27 by 40 inches. In the evenings, I made rather large-scale oil paintings in an abstract expressionist manner based on these drawings. Abstract expressionism was a dominant way of working, painting in the 1950s for young artists in New York City. I did what everybody else was doing. I became an abstract expressionist painter but gradually they began looking like landscapes. And uh, I did a lot of drawings and paintings from the drawings in Montauk and Maine, and they gradually became more realistic. And when I came back to New York that fall, I uh, continued to paint from the drawings, getting more elaborate as I went along and more and more realistic. 
the abstract expressionist brushstrokes disappeared and the arbitrary use of color disappeared and they became more and more naturalistic. And this painting done from drawings was the largest oil painting of the studies of Roman ruins. I did, also did a lot of large-scale drawings at Positano of the cliffs of, uh, along the Amalfi Drive. This was, they're much larger. This is eight feet wide and one of the largest paintings I've done. And uh, I did another and uh, in more arbitrary color. Then I decided to become more naturalistic and uh, did this painting, which was the most carefully developed. Several years later, many years later actually, I was invited to go out west to do paintings for the uh, bicentennial sh celebration. And the artists could go wherever they chose to go. We decided to go to England with our two daughters on spring break. And we went to uh, Stonehenge. You could simply walk anywhere you wanted. Now it's fenced off. And kids were climbing all over these rocks. I guess that's why they fenced it off later. This view is in Tintern Abbey, where we went because of my daughter, Julia, who selected it. Us. There was a poem by William Wordsworth that she liked. I almost developed a very sore neck looking up. When I did the painting of the White House ruin, it was on the Navajo Reservation. The following year, I was named a cultural exchange person to the Navajo, and I went back for the following two years. I did teach at one of the uh, Navajo schools. I gave classes in printmaking, and they gave me a very large one-man show at the Cultural Center of my paintings of nudes, uh, which was quite surprising. I then went on to make a huge wash drawing, well, it's about five feet wide, of the Grand Canyon. This was the view I chose, which I guess is a pretty much, pretty much of a standard view, the, the tourist photograph. And this is the view of my easel in place uh, tied to that tree on the edge of the canyon. This is the watercolor I did from it. And another view into the Grand Canyon, also quite large. And then on the other side of the canyon, which is restricted, uh, it's part of the Navajo Reservation. But because of my standing, I got permission to work there. And uh, I did a couple watercolors. But this is a view of the canyon from the other side, from the, from the Navajo Reservation side. Uh, and then we went back to other parts of the canyon and I thought this was a view I wanted to paint. While I was working here, a group of, horse, of cowboys on horses with their rifles drawn charged through. A film was being shot. I don't know what the movie was. And the following year, I went to uh, Machu Picchu with my daughter Ellen at her uh, Christmas vacation time. And this was these, I chose this view to paint because it's standard and recognizable. This is a view of my setup, the line drawing on the watercolor, and the final watercolor as completed right there. Years later, I decided to make prints do a whole series of prints from these watercolors. And aquatint etching, which is a very complex method and takes a great deal of handwork on the plate. 
uh, of erasing essentially, <clears throat> and then, but it gives you a, a, the chance to do a print that looks like a watercolor, and a portfolio eventually was issued with ten or eleven prints. And this is another one that was added for the portfolio, and it's a temple at Paestum in Italy. And while I was working in Paestum, a wedding party took place, and the, the bride and groom and the whole group of people around them gathered around me for a photo shoot with me in the center against the temple. And then they walked away. This is the watercolor, and uh, the aqua tint etching that was produced from that came off very well, it looks exactly like the, the watercolor. Designed it perfectly for the landscape. I don't know it's why people complain. Everybody complains about change. But it's centered right on this big curve. <laughs> 